Next, let's go ahead and create a bit of a basic app here. We'll just comment out this initial block of code. And first up, we're going to declare a few constants, which will in fact be Lua global variables. And we'll do this because we're going to use them all the time and it just makes it a bit simpler to access throughout our project. And rather than having to retype the longer commands each time. And one thing I did notice here is the autocomplete wasn't coming up. So that likely means my syntax is not set to Corona SDK Lua. As you can see, it's only set to basic Lua. So we'll just go ahead and switch that. So first of all, we'll create a basic background by using the display library's new rect function. So we'll allocate a local variable, my bg equals display dot new rect. And as you can see here, using the autocomplete, there are five input arguments that we need to fill in here. Now the first one is actually optional and we'll get into that uh, parent group once we start talking about scenes and scene management. But for now all we need is an x, y, width and height. So we'll drop that at the center of the x location on the screen. Center of the y. We'll give that a width to be the entire width of the content area and the entire height of the content area which is 480 pixels high. Then we'll go ahead and change the background color for this object. As you can see now we've got a simple new rect display object which sets the background to be a light purple. So as you can see here, the size of our background image doesn't completely fill the screen on the simulated iPhone 5. And that's simply to do with the chosen content area set up for a project. But just to clean these black bars up, what we can do is make the image a little bit oversized in terms of the height. So we'll just do that here by making the rectangle a little bit larger, say adding 100 pixels. And now the background completely fills the screen area. Next, let's make a fictitious title for our app. And once again, we'll define a local variable called my title. And we'll use the display library function called new text. And once again, we won't need the parent group in this simple example. We will give it the text string angry faces app. And we'll position that at the center of the X coordinate. We'll position it 50 pixels down from the top. Uh, we don't actually need the width and the height if we've defined the X and the Y position. And then for the font and font size, we'll just use default for the font type and a size of 20 initially. Let's go ahead and save that. And your project should relaunch. And then we've got this text string in here on the Corona simulator. So next up, what I originally did when I created this simple app was to go search for 
uh, an angry face image on the net. So I initially went over to openclipart.org and did a simple search for angry faces. And there's a bunch of different images here that came up. It's always a good idea when making your own apps that you should check the usage conditions copyright and license conditions for any artwork that you have not created by yourself. But to get the exact same image that I've used, just head over to my site, startupsblog.com, and under this tutorials header, scroll down to lesson three. And partway down the post, you'll be able to find the two images that we require. So I'll just go ahead and click on Save Image As and drop that to the desktop. Now there's actually two versions here. There's an at 2x version and a version without that at 2x suffix. Now what that is associated with is different resolution screen sizes. You can have Corona dynamically load different sized images based on the actual device resolution. I won't dive into too much of the details of that for now, but just download both of these images and drop them on the desktop. Then within your folder, it's always good to segregate your core app from different images and different audio sounds. So create a separate folder within the root level of your project called images. And we will simply drag both of those angry face images into that folder. Next up, let's get that angry face image on the screen. So we'll declare a local variable called face and we'll use the display new image rect function. And the first input required is the file name. So that's the complete path based on the root level of the project. So that'll be images forward slash angry faces PNG. And also the base level image height and width, well actually width and height in that order. So this one in particular is 150 pixels wide by 150 pixels high. So go ahead and save that and we're just going to rerun the project. And as you can see initially it drops it in the default 00, zero position which is like I mentioned earlier in the top left hand corner of the screen. So let's drop that straight in the center of the app. And we'll change the X and Y properties by doing this. And go ahead and save and reload that. And now we've got our image directly in the center of the screen. Now, one thing I noticed when I looked at this image is here that I have a case sensitivity issue up here with the naming of my two images. So I'll just go ahead and correct that first. And although that will work in the simulator, there's a pretty good likelihood once you build to the device, you'll find that your image would not load. So you want to go ahead and make that change in the file path as well. Go ahead and save that and we shouldn't see any appreciable change on the simulator. Mm -hmm.